Hello, I'm Dr. Charles Penner, a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada, certified in respiratory and critical care medicine. I've been working in collaboration with Dr. Magdi Yunus to translate his research into the clinical realm. I will be explaining the odds ratio product called ORP, which is a new method for comparing sleep EEG measurement to help you understand how the ORP will fit into the evaluation of patients with sleep disorders. The ORP has the potential to give us a tool to evaluate sleep depth and effectiveness and measure how interventions in sleep disorders impact overall sleep. A traditional sleep study scored using the RNK rules requires a technician to manually score the EEG and is a very labor-intensive process. In this model, the data can be summarized in a hypnogram chart which indicates when the sleeper moves from being awake to being in stage 1, 2, 3 or REM sleep. The ORP examines the same EEG data as traditional studies, but summarizes a very detailed analysis into a simple number, which measures the quality of sleep along a sleep depth scale. The patient is fully awake at 2.5 and fully asleep at zero. The single number value of the ORP can identify the same factors included in a traditional analysis of sleep quality. This includes the onset of sleep, the number of arousals, the amount of time awake after sleep onset, and the amount of good sleep. The ORP is based on examining the more in-depth characteristics of electrical activity from the brain. While these signals are very complex, they can be described as having the features of a wave. Waves have an amplitude as well as a frequency, which is the number of cycles in a given period of time. The complex electrical activity of the brain can be thought of as waves in four different frequencies. Beta frequency occurs 13 to 30 times per second, alpha frequency 8 to 12, theta frequency 4 to 8, and delta frequency 0.5 to 3. Any complex electrical activity can be described by a combination of waves through a mathematical process called a Fourier transform. When a Fourier transform is performed in a sample of EEG data, it yields four waves of different frequency and different heights. When these four waves are added together mathematically, they produce the original piece of EEG. If another piece of EEG is put through the Fourier transform process, we will find four waves of the same frequencies, but the height of these waves will be different than in the first example. This concept forms the basis of the development of the ORP with the idea that any piece of EEG can be broken down into these four waves. In studying these waves systematically, Dr. Yunus has measured the height of the waves that are possible in an EEG signal and divided this into a range of 10 possible values. Each wave can now be assigned a simple height value with 9 being the highest possible value and 0 being no height at all. In a sample of EEG where every one of the four waves, delta, theta, alpha, and beta, had a height of 2, we could summarize the wave with the state or bin number of 2222. Two, two, two. However, if another EEG had waves with heights measuring delta at 0, theta at 6, alpha at 9, and beta at 3, then we could summarize this wave as bin 0693. With four different waves and 10 possible height values for each, this gives us a system of 10,000 possible combinations with which to compare EEGs. Dr. Yunus applied this systematic approach empirically by analyzing the EEG data from 58 different sleep studies. For comparison, each of these studies was scored according to the normal R and K sleep rules, breaking down into 30 second stages either awake, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, or REM sleep. Dr. Yunus then broke each of the EEGs into 3 second fragments and analyzed them with a Fourier transform. Every fragment was summarized with a four-digit code as we have described. If a fragment happened during a period of being awake using the R and K rules, then the fragment was tagged awake. And if it occurred in any of the stages of sleep, it was tagged as sleep. All of the fragments from all 58 sleep studies were grouped according to the bin number and analyzed. For example, imagine that 10 fragments are found in bin 2222. Six occurred during sleep, and four occurred while awake. The odds of this person being asleep, if this type of EEG is found, would be 60%. In contrast, if we found eight fragments in bin 2849, and two occurred while awake, then the probability of being asleep in bin 2849 is 80%.
In the ORP scale, Dr. Eunice assigned being fully awake as 2.5 and fully asleep as 0. So with the probability in these examples, bin 2222 is designated as 1 and bin 2849 is designated as 0 0.5. Again, the ORP scale here offers us insight into the depth and quality of sleep with a single number. This result was then validated with another sample of 56 people. All of these new EEGs were scored manually by two different technologists in the traditional method and then scored separately using the ORP for comparison. Three things were found during the validation phase. The first finding is that the technologist's assessment of being awake or in sleep matched the ORP finding. Here we have charted their results against the ORP scoring for the same EEGs. On this graph, the awake fragments are black and the sleep fragments are white. The shaded segments received a split decision on awake or asleep from the technologist. The higher the ORP across the x-axis, the more likely the person was to be scored awake by the two technologists. When the ORP is zero, the technologist scored the patient asleep, and when the ORP is 2.5, the technologist scored the patient awake. The second finding is that the average ORP was lower as one progressed from wakefulness to stage three sleep. In this chart, stages of sleep are indicated on the x-axis with being awake on the left and being asleep on the right. The ORP is indicated from 0 to 2.5 on the y-axis. Notice that the ORP declines in a linear fashion from left to right in concert with the changes in wakefulness using traditional sleep scoring rules. The third finding is that the chance of having an arousal or waking up in the next 30 second period increased in a linear fashion as ORP increased. The chance of having an arousal was less than 10% when ORP was 0 to 0 0.25 and was 56% at the highest level of ORP. These lines of evidence indicate that the ORP does correlate with the depth of sleep. The application of the ORP to a traditional scoring of EEG leads to an interesting observation. In this EEG 30 second epoch, line A is scored as being awake. Line B is also scored awake, but it looks quite different. The underlined area shows slowing of the EEG and is actually sleep. But the whole 30 second epoch is scored awake because the amount of sleep didn't quite exceed 15 seconds. The only difference when comparing line B to C is that the length of sleep on C is just a bit longer. However, using the traditional rules, line C would be scored stage 1 sleep and not awake. Line D is labeled as stage 2 sleep primarily because of the sleep spindle located near the middle. However, it looks quite similar to C. Line E is labeled as stage 2 sleep as well, but it has a number of delta waves present. The R and K rule specify that if delta waves are less than 6 seconds, this would be considered stage 2. Line F is scored as stage 3 sleep. Now if we add ORP to the EEG, we can see a significant difference in depth of sleep. Line D and E are both traditionally called stage 2, but they range widely in ORP scores with one being 1.2 and one being 0.4. Line E and F are very similar in terms of ORP and yet are different stages using the R and K rules. And so the depth of sleep scale provided by the ORP may be a better way of assessing quality of sleep than the traditional rules. In practical terms, the scale is very easy to use in spite of the complex science behind it. If the ORP is 2 or greater, the person is awake. If the ORP is less than 1, the person is asleep. And an ORP between 1 and 2 is an unstable state between wake and sleep. It is anticipated that this depth of sleep scale will simplify the analysis of sleep and allow evaluation of sleep quality to be more widely available. It is important to understand this research because it has the potential to substantially improve our ability to monitor sleep in an easy to understand way. Its application in a home setting allows evaluation of sleep in a patient's natural environment. ORP will allow clinicians to evaluate sleep over time following different interventions and evaluating their effectiveness in an objective way. ORP has the potential to understand very mild sleep apnea and how disruptive it is to some people's sleep. 
and ORP will facilitate the evaluation of insomnia and restless legs and the effectiveness of their treatment.